Transformation Church. This is live. And we're going to As pray. opposed to dead. <laughs> <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you that there's joy in your house. Thank you that there's joy in your presence. Thank you that we can have heaven here. Thank you that you. I just want to say thank you for that you are great to be with, Lord. Yeah. That we, we love you. We love being in your presence. We love being with you. We love hearing from you. We love getting to know you better. We love you. And I thank you that you love us and that you're real. I ask for each person uh, watching and, and those present, Lord, that you will move in our hearts, transform us. Help us to know you better, to appreciate you more, to love you more. Help us to pour out our worship on you tonight, Lord. We love you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Glorify Jesus. Do what we can't do. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. In Jesus' name. Amen. We allow the river of God to flow to us, to touch us. We allow the river of God to flow in us, to change us, through us to change the world. Flow through us to change the world. Holy Spirit, flow through us, touch and change our world. We allow the river of God to flow to us, to touch us. We allow the river of God to flow in us, to change us, through us to change the world. Flow through us to change the world. Holy Spirit, flow through us, touch and change our world.
Set your heart upon the altar. Set your feet on holy ground. In the presence of our Savior, love is found. Cast your eyes upon his glory. When the storm is all around, surrender to his spirit. Hope is found.
holy presence that is in this place that is going across the airwaves father there's nothing like your presence we need you we want you we desire more of you I ask that you fill each and every vessel that's reaching out to you right now, each person, each man, woman, boy, girl. Father, that you would fill up to overflowing, not just a little dabble to you, Father, but an overflow, an overflow that splashes upon everyone that they come, come into contact with. Father, we need more of you. I hear the Lord saying, examine your hearts. That's only something that we each individually can do. No one else can examine our hearts but us. So just take a moment and examine your heart right now. If he places his finger on something, just say, Lord, I repent. And give it to him. I, also, I hear him say that some of you, he's going to ask you to give up some things. That... To somebody else would say, well, what's a big deal about that? It's kind of like when um, Peter said, well, what about John? And Jesus said, what is that to you? I'm, I'm talking to you. <laughs> so let him do whatever he wants and surrender everything to him. I'm going to move forward, but he'll continue speaking to you throughout the evening, I'm sure. Even past the time when this broadcast goes off. In the midnight hour, some of you are going to be awakened by the Holy Spirit, given some directions and corrections. I hear that too. I think that Kenneth Copeland saying this is the year of, I don't even remember, direction, correction, something. I know those two are two of them. I'm going to try to make this quick. We're giving God honor by honoring him with our first fruits, with the first 10 cents of the, every dollar. That's what a tithe is, one-tenth. So if you've got $10, we honor him with the first dollar. And what he said, the scripture that he gave to me, uh, most of us already know the story about the, he was talking about, you don't know the day or the hour when I'm, when the Son of Man will come back. And this is in Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to jump into verse 14. He said, what is it like? He said, for it's like a man who is about to take a long journey. And he called his servants together and entrusted them with his property. Do you know that God's entrusted you with his property? Your body is his property. Should you choose to surrender, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So... He entrusts us with our physical body, and it's going to sound like I might be meddling, but I'm actually following the Holy Spirit. Some of you, you need to give up drinking Coca-Cola. Seriously. Some of you need to give up certain things that God will put his finger on it, and he doesn't do it to take fun away from you. He does it because he's got work for you to do, and he wants you to have a long, happy, healthy life. And he, you know, could he just do some magical or, you know, miraculous? He can but he gives us choices to make, amen? What it, oh, the year of correction, the year of correction direction, direction, protection, protection and, perfection. and perfection. All right, and it really, so anyway, to one, verse 15, to one he gave five talents, probably about $5,000, I'm reading the Amplified Classic, classic Version, to another two, to another one, to each in proportion to his own personal ability, then he departed and left the country. And I just heard the Lord say, quit comparing yourself with anybody else. He, he, he's giving you in proportion to what he knows you can handle, and then when you handle that properly, he'll increase. Amen? Amen. All right. 
So he, verse 16, who had received the five talents, went at once and traded with them, and he gained five more. And likewise, he who had received the two talents, he gained two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went on, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Nobody likes that part. If you're not doing the right thing, you don't want him to be settling your account, right? And he who had received the five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted me with five talents. See, here I have gained five more talents. I'm going to put here, God wants us to multiply. He wants us to increase. He wants us to take what he entrusts us with and make increase with it. Amen? Verse 21, his master said, Well done, you upright, honorable, and admirable, all these extra words, and faithful servants. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness that your, which your master enjoys. And he also, so he went to the guy with the two talents and he said, hey, I, I made uh, two more talents with my two talents. So he said the same thing to him. You know, you're a wonderful, honorable, and admirable, faithful servant. And he, he um, entered into the share of the joy and everything. But this is the verse that I, I, I wanted to actually focus on. If, 23, that the master said, well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. I will put you in charge of much. And those, I do really believe this is going to be short, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Those of that will have ears to hear what the Spirit saying, if you will choose to be faithful over the whatever he's entrusted into your care, spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. We've said that before. The number four in Transformation Church is spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. If you will take care of whatever he's entrusted in, into you in all of those areas, we're talking about finances primarily, then he says, I will put you in charge of much. And this is a word for some that if you'll grab a hold of it, it's actually a rhema word. It's not just, I shouldn't say just, but it is the word of God. Anybody can grab a hold of this. But because you're hearing this and you're watching this, even if it's five years into the future, God's saying to you, if you'll take what I have given you and you will do, be honorable with it, you will cause increase, you will cause it to double, you won't throw it, you know, dig a hole in the, in the ground and bury it and do nothing with it. I will honor you with more. I will put you in charge of much. And God's trying to get much to a lot of us, but we have to be faithful with the few or the little that we have. And then he will entrust us with the much. Amen? Amen? So that is the word of God. If you like it or don't like it, that's what God said to share tonight. I think some of you are going, woohoo! And I'm let and let's just ask him. I'm gonna pray a prayer on and grab a hold of this. Lord, we ask you to open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to receive what you have for us. Father, that you will help us to doubt that catch the download of the blueprints that you're giving us to cause increase. Father, that we will have a spirit of wisdom and revelation to see how to invest financially, to see how to take care of our bodies, our physical bodies, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. Father, that we will make the right choices and that we will bring you great delight, that we will honor you with the way that we choose to do, to handle our finances and handle whatever it is that you give into our hands and into our care. In fact, I even hear God say, even how you raise your children, he's entrusted those children to you how you invest in them. You're investing in the future, uh, and their future, that God will get you. Uh, someone's going, I don't want to be blessed with more children. <laughs> but you know what the blessing is? Grandchildren. And I can tell you right now, there's nothing like grandchildren. Yeah. Amen. My husband says amen. All right, so we're going to do the, if you will go to Transformation Church, I've got the, if you're looking live on Facebook, it's right underneath there. Just click on transformationchurch.com and then go to the giving tab and in the giving tab it says online giving which we want you to do you give by clicking on there it's paypal you can give or it's got a mailing address that you can give it to a p.o box or uh, um you can actually do snail mail that's right snail mail is a p.o box ah! all right anyway uh, that's funny <laughs> Then you want to go to the offering tithe and offering declaration thing and read this with us, okay? And we invite you to give. Ready? Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes a devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially 
and I receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. Woohoo! And I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and heavenly and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything. Yes, put my hand to it. I forgot we started doing that, putting it on our head. He grants me the abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. I'm a money magnet. Just go ahead and say that. I am a money magnet. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, <laughs> expenses decrease, sorry, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs and houses and lands, and that's just the beginning. So we just praise God for every gift and every giver, and we are thankful for you, and thank you for giving. So Father, I pray a blessing right now on each gift, on each giver. Father, I pray for multiplication, Lord, as they've chosen to put you first and to sow into the kingdom of God, actually make an investment into the kingdom of God that you are investing in their lives of increase. Father, again, for them to see those God ideas, those witty inventions, to get favor with their boss, to get the, the more sales than, than their counterparts, Father, the increase comes. Even in famine, Father, you said that when Isaac sowed in famine, there he, he reaped a hundredfold blessing. So, Father, let, right, in fact, I hear the Spirit say it. Those that grab a hold of it, ask God for a hundredfold blessing. So we ask you for a hundredfold blessing, and we receive it right now in Jesus' name. Woo-hoo. You ready? My sweetheart's coming. Not my favorite, but the sweetheart, the only, the one and only. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Channy and Evelyn, for praying. While we're still kind of in the, the offering mode, I want to share something with you that I've heard a couple times now from. From Jonathan Shuttlesworth. Anyway, I can't remember the other comedian's name, but Jerry Seinfeld, which oh, is yeah. a pretty well known yeah. comedian, who happens to be Jewish, and another comedian both decided to move out to LA at the same time. True story. This is actually truth. This is not a joke. This is not a Jerry Seinfeld joke. This has actually happened. And, um, the the other guy whose name I can't remember, after about two to three weeks, he ran into Jerry again and said, I just can't find somewhere to live. I'm having issues finding an apartment. He said, Where did you where did you rent your apartment? He said, and pointed to a, a building and said, I bought that apartment over there. He said, You what? He said, Jews don't rent. And, and the statement he made is Jews only believe the first five books of the Bible. He said you can be more prosperous fully believing the first five books of the Bible than sort of believing the, all 66 books. Right. So that challenged me. We need to get out of the sort of believing. We need to, I mean, Jerry Seinfeld is not a Christian. But he believes in the covenant that his heritage, his birth, natural birth, the Jewish people, he believes in that covenant and operates in it and refuses to rent. And when the Gentile couldn't find a place to live, he buys a place to live. Amen. So... We need to allow our mindset to be changed by the Word of God and to be, because He has more for us than we even want to ask for. And don't think you're going to ask 
to bankrupt heaven because it's impossible. <laughs> you know, if God could pay off the national debt of America with a couple bricks from his road. Anyway, I want to kind of, this morning we talked about building our life upon a firm foundation, which is the Word of God. Well, now I'm going to kind of go into the backstory of what got this all stirred up this week in me, that I had no idea this is what was getting stirred up. And it's in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. We're going to start in the King James, and then we'll probably read it in a, at least one other version, maybe a couple. Galatians chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He, therefore, that miss ministereth to you by the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, Say, that's me. Through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. In other words, though, I mean, notice it's those that are of faith. That you're believing in what? the cross did for you. If you feel like you can do anything to earn what the Bible promises, you're still under the law. And if you decide to operate under the law, which is your choice, you've got to fulfill it perfectly or you're in big trouble. If you're not relying on what the cross did, what Jesus did, everything that we believe around here, it's based on what he did for us, not what we can do for ourselves. It's what he did for us gives us the strength to do what we need to do. It gives us not even the strength, it gives us the desire to do what we need to do, to operate in the blessing of God, to, to believe. I mean, my mindset, he has spent years, literally years, because I have to admit I grew up with a poverty mindset. And it's taken years. It would have never occurred to me. I'd have been like the other comedian. I can't find a place to live. It would have never occurred to me. Just go buy something. <laughs> because poverty doesn't think that way. Poverty thinks rent. Poverty thinks borrow. Poverty thinks... And, and the system that's set up by this world takes advantage of people with a poverty mentality because you don't believe you can do anything unless you get a credit card, unless you borrow money from the bank, and they're the ones making it. The Bible says we should be the lender and not the borrower. We should be the head and not the tail. Amen. And that's in everything, every part of life, even in, even in spiritual things. Amen. He's making money. Who's making money? Renting out the apartment. Yeah. So Seinfeld, one of the other guys worried about finding something to rent, he's making money by renting out apartments. Instead of renting an apartment, you should be thinking, which apartment complex do I want to buy? Amen. Amen. If it's never, one thing's for sure, you will never hit something you're not aiming for. Yeah. Yeah. 
If you have no goals, you hit them every time. <laughs> you get nothing. All right. Verse 11. But no, but that no man is justified by the law, law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Say that. The just shall live by faith. Because there's no way you can justify yourself living, trying to follow. And there's no way you can receive the things the Bible promises by your works. It's by faith in what Christ has done on the cross and then you receiving what he's done and allowing that to manifest completely in your life. And there's many things in us, depending on how we were raised, but depending, but depending on the environment we grew up in, there's many things that he's going to probably have to work out of us to bring us into everything he has for us. That's why one of the songs we're going to learn and start singing around here is Joy in the House. I think it's just called House of the Lord, but it talks about there's joy in the house of the Lord. But I particularly like the things where it says, we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. Amen. We are forgiven. We are saved by his grace. Let the house of the Lord give praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because you were a beggar. Yes. But now you're the son or daughter of the king. You're either a prince or a princess. All you ladies that always wanted to be a princess, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a princess. You are instantly the child of the king. Not a king, the king. The king. <laughs> The one that all of these heathen are going to have to bow down to one day. Amen. 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 Whether they want to or not. So you have a choice. You will bow the knee to Jesus. You have a choice. The choice is when are you going to do it? Are you going to do it by your own free will and receive all that he's done for you? Or are you going to wait until the angel grabs you by the shoulder and jams you down on your knees? Because you will bow before the king. It's either going to be your choice or the, that ten-foot angel that gets a hold of you and makes you bow. Amen. Amen. And the law is not of faith. So anything that is a list of rules, anything that is something you do is not of faith. In other words, you can't give enough. You can't pray enough. You can't attend church. I don't care if you get to heaven. If you if if you're depending on your your badges of perfect attendance to Sunday school for the last 30, 40, 50 years to get you into heaven, you're going to be in trouble when you get up there. But if you're depending on what Jesus did and that perfect attendance is just because you're in love with him and you wanted to receive more from him and you knew there was more of him that you could receive by gathering and doing what his word says, not forsaking the assembling of yourself together. You know, there's a real fine line between doing the same thing and either being in the flesh or being in the spirit. Two people can be doing the exact same thing, and one being in the flesh, operating under the law, and one being in the spirit. And the bottom line is the motivation of your heart. That's what why the word is so critical, because the word is going to show you, wait a minute, that's you. At your flesh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to get to heaven and, and hear what what we read this morning. Jesus say, "Oh, you just used me to make yourself important." No, nope, I don't think that's a good thing. To, I want to hear, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." You did the right thing because you had the right motive. So all these people did stuff, but hmm, they were in trouble. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So 
here's here's the good news you can become in the spirit a Jew just like Jerry Seinfeld and stop renting and start buying Amen. because of what Jesus did on the cross you can be grafted in just like you were born a Jew and that blessing that is on the Jewish people can come upon you if you'll receive it amen, amen. Just, just it's it's really a shame that most of us at least in the circles I grew up with when they when we got saved all we received was not going to hell when we died we didn't receive the stripes that he took for our healing we didn't receive the fact that he became poor that we might be made rich I mean we we just tend to overlook all that because you know you know rich was like evil rich may be a four letter word but it's not a bad four letter word you know love is a four letter word too <laughs> hello alright I want to re read this from let me see what versions I downloaded and can read it from let's just see what the passion has to say just for the fun of it the title of Galatians 3 these other versions kind of give little titles here and there it's faith brings freedom faith brings freedom why would you if faith brings freedom why would you want to live in bondage I, I remember that reminds me of when we were on the road we had a service in Cape Coral Florida which is down by Fort Myers the church we were ministering at met in the school that morning the Lord had me uh, minister on the anointing that binds up and heals the brokenhearted and so we called for people that wanted prayer and suddenly during that we started on one side of the room and about we we're to about the third or fourth person we heard all the way on the other side of the room someone I don't know if wailing is the right word anyway making a commotion and everybody thought oh she's just being touched by the power of God well in our spirit we sensed you know discerning of spirits you can discern when the Holy Ghost is working and you can discern when the Holy Ghost is irritating another type of spirit and what we both discerned and we we looked at each other and didn't even have to say a word to each other we knew this was not the Holy Ghost this was an evil spirit reacting to the presence of the Holy Ghost and getting nervous because deliverance was coming down the line and getting closer and finally it just it couldn't handle it and had an outburst and so we both felt directed we went skipped about 30 people I guess and went right over there and dealt with it because we don't like to give the devil any time in service period and you don't have to so we went over and and cast this up uh, well we didn't say get out we just <laughs> We know we have authority, and the anointing drives that thing out. So we just laid hands on her. Well, it looked like somebody hit her with a baseball bat. But as she went down and as she was laying there, I saw in the spirit like a seven-year-old girl in a prison cell. But I saw the door being flung open. But the little girl was too afraid to come out of the cell. And the Lord said, find out what her name is, ask her husband her first name, and then call her by name and tell her to come out. The doors open, come out. And so I did that, and then we moved on. And Well, we noticed that night when she came back in for the night service, she looked like 10, 15 years younger. Her whole countenance was different. So we ran her down afterwards and found out at about seven years old, which is about the age of the little girl I saw in the in the vision, she had had some kind of traumatic experience and she was still carrying the scars from even in her, what would you say she was, probably her 40s? Somewhere in there, but anyway. 
But here's the thing. Freedom is available to us, but some of us are so used to bondage, we're afraid to come out into freedom. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that if you're in some kind of bondage and you're more comfortable with your bondage, that the Lord do like the mother eagle does and pull all the feathers out of the nest until you want to learn to fly in the spirit in Jesus' name. That you'll get so uncomfortable in that nest, in that prison that you're in, that you'll come out because the door is open. and You can walk out into the freedom he has for you. And faith brings freedom. If you can ever get to the point that you realize in Christ, you do not have to earn your acceptance with God. He's already paid for it. You just receive it. Stop trying to earn it. You're driving yourself crazy. You're, you're not getting anywhere because you're working in the flesh, and the flesh cannot produce the benefits of the Spirit. You didn't get saved that way. Many of us, we want, we get saved and we let Jesus be the author of our faith. He started the book, but then we take the pen out of his hand and we start writing the story ourselves. Well, the word says he's the author and the finisher. If you don't let him keep writing the book, you're going to miss the mark of what God has for you. You're not going to make it to the full destiny. So, the Passion Version says, What has happened to you, foolish Galatians? Who has put you under an evil spell? Did God not open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus' crucifixion? Was he not revealed to you as the crucified one? So answer me this. Did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping Jewish laws? No, you received him as a gift because you believed in the Messiah. Your new life began when the Holy Spirit gave you a new birth. Why then would you foolishly turn from living in the Spirit to trying to finish by your own works? Have you endured so many trials and persecutions for nothing? Let me ask you again. What does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God's tremendous power have to do with you keeping religious laws? The Holy Spirit is poured out upon us through the revelation and power of faith. Abraham, our father of faith, believed God and the substance of his faith released God's righteousness to him. Now, Abraham is the perfect example of what we want to talk about. He got tired of waiting for the promise that God promised him a son. God promised him an heir. They had no children. He and his wife had no children. So they, they had a genius thought. Duh. Oil. Well, since I can't give you a child, why don't you sleep with my maid and she'll give you a child. So he tried working out the promise of God in the flesh and we're still, the planet is still feeling the ramifications of that mistake in the Middle East. It didn't just affect Abraham's immediate family, it affected the whole planet. At the same time, we're feeling, the whole planet is feeling the effects of when he finally got in the spirit and he and Sarah believed God and received the strength, even though they were both past childbearing years, they received the strength to produce the promise. Now, they had something to do with it, but come on, by the time you're 190, you had very little to do with it. I mean, they still had to, you know, they still had to, you know. <laughs> Here's the amazing part that we don't bring out when we talk about Abraham. He was a hundred when Isaac was born, right? Or when Sarah got pregnant. So he was somewhere between a hundred and a hundred and two or a hundred and a hundred and one when 
Isaac was born, he had more children. Sarah passed. He got remarried and had more children after that. So he had to be well in his hundreds and still having kids. Once you get a hold of what you can have in the spirit, you have no limitation. Yeah, that's a blessing we're not asking for. But we will, we will just enjoy our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and maybe even great-great-grandchildren. Wouldn't that be cool to be here to see your great-great-grandchildren? Amen. It's possible if we'll receive what he has for us. If we'll believe his word and it will operate not in the law, but in the spirit and allow the spirit to do its complete work in us. And Abraham, when he and Sarah finally got it together, they received from the spirit what they needed to accomplish in the flesh to see the promise come about. Amen. Amen. Abraham, our father, believed God, and the substance of his faith released God's righteousness to him. This is verse 7. So the true children of Abraham have the same faith as their father. Amen. And the scripture prophesied that on the basis of faith, God would declare Gentiles to be righteous. God announced the good news ahead of time to Abraham. Through your example of faith, all the nations will be blessed. Because Abraham finally got it together and the promised child came, and through that line, Jesus came to the earth, the whole earth has been blessed since Christianity would not exist had Abraham not believed God and operated in faith instead of in the law. Actually, Abraham couldn't operate in the law because the law wasn't even given yet, which we're going to see possibly in a minute here. If you, if you read through all of Galatians, it's a pretty good historical book. It gives the background of the Apostle Paul, and you know he spent at least 17 years before he was officially commissioned by the church in Jerusalem, by the leaders, the apostles in Jerusalem. But he didn't let it stop him. Amen. And so the blessing of Abraham's faith is now our blessing too. Amen. Amen. But if you rely on works of keeping the law for salvation, you live under the law's curse. For it is clearly written, utterly cursed is everyone who fails to practice every detail and requirement that is written in this law. It is obvious that no one achieves the righteousness of God by attempting to keep the law, for it is written, the one who is in a right relationship with God will live by faith. But keeping the law does not require faith, but self-effort, for the law teaches if you practice the principles of law, you must follow all of them. Yet Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed the curse completely as he became a curse in our place, for it is written, everyone who is hung upon a tree is cursed. Jesus Christ dissolved the curse from our lives so that in him all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon Gentiles. And now through faith we receive the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us. Beloved friends, let me use an illustration that we can understand. Technically, when a contract is signed, it can't be changed after it has been put into effect. It is too late to alter the agreement. Remember the royal proclamation God spoke over Abraham and to Abraham's child, God said that his promises were made to pass on to Abraham's child, not children. And who is this child? It's the son of promise, Christ himself. 
This means that the covenant between God and Abraham was fulfilled in Messiah and cannot be altered. Yet the written law was not given to Moses until 430 years after God had signed his contract with Abraham. The law then doesn't supersede the promise since the royal proclamation was given before the law. If that were the case, it would have nullified what God said to Abraham. We receive all the promises because of the promised one, not because we keep the law. Why then was the law given at all? It was given along the it was given alongside the promise to show people their sins, but the law was designed to last only until the coming of the seed, the child who was promised. When God gave the law, he gave it first to angels, they gave it to Moses, his mediator, who then gave it to the people. To the people. Now, a mediator does not represent just one party alone, but God fulfilled it all by himself. Since that's true, we should consider the written, the written law to be contrary to the promise of new. Since that's true, should we consider the written law to be contrary to the promise of new life? How absurd. Truly, if there was a law that could keep which would give us new life. Truly, if there was a law that we could keep which would give us true life, then our salvation would have come by keeping the law. But the scripture makes it clear the whole world is imprisoned by sin. This was so the promise would be given through faith to people who believe in Jesus Christ. So until the revelation of faith for salvation was released, the law was a jailer holding us as prisoners under lock and key until the faith which was destined to be revealed would set us free. The law was our guardian until Christ came so that we would be saved by faith. Now when it says saved, it's talking about not just going to heaven when you die is talking about everything the Bible offers. Every, the healing, the blessing, all of it is by faith. And the law keeps you in prison and away from what actually belongs to you. If you go on and read it, it's talking about even though you could be an heir of everything, if you're a child, you're really no different than a slave because someone else has has control over you. So you have to come to the point where you're a mature person in Christ so that you can access everything that belongs to you. You have to become what well, the Bible calls us kings and priests. So we've got to grow up to be that king and that, and that priest. Amen. But we don't do that by our own effort. We do that by hearing what he's saying either through his word or to our spirit. And then we adjust to that. We let him dictate the steps we take. You think it was easy for the Apostle Paul to go 17 years without recognition from his brethren? I mean, this is, this, you know what we'd have done today? We'd have made him an instant superstar because he was out killing the church last week. But now, now he's preaching the same message. And it might have actually ruined him. It did, wouldn't have given him any time to mature. There's so many, uh, especially back in uh, when we were teenagers, they were getting these, a lot of these uh, music pop stars and rock stars. They were getting saved. And they were instantly promoted to this like major Christian outreach person and it destroyed a lot of their Christian lives because they hadn't had time to mature. They were never they never grew up in the Lord and they they've just fallen off the scene. I'm not even sure if some of them are Christians anymore. We don't know. But Milo Lefebvre on the other hand, he was he was part of a, a major band from Atlanta. I think it was called the Atlanta Rhythm Section or something. Anyway, when he got saved, he laid all that down 
and he went and started cleaning toilets in a church and he spent decades letting letting God work him over until he was ready and he's still today I forgot how many years it's, it's probably been 40 or 50 years now and he's still preaching the word now he and he was willing to go from having millions of dollars to cleaning toilets at a church and being the janitor and letting God do the work in him that needed to be done and now he's having a major influence for the kingdom for good instead of being one of these that shot up and then fell down because they didn't have time to get the roots the root system in they weren't grounded in the word and, and they you know I, I don't want to name names for sure but I know of one that I think would happen but anyway I, he was popular in Christian circles for about three three to five years and now you don't even hear about him anymore. I don't even know if he's still on the planet but we need to allow the same spirit that led us to Jesus to mature us so that we can walk in everything that God has for us and it will bring us into freedom not into a you know, why would you trade one bondage for another? Why would you trade the bondage of sin for the bondage of religion? Actually, you'd have more fun <laughs> in the bondage of sin than you do in the bondage of religion. That religious devil is worse than the, the, the standard. I think, they, I think all the demons that get their Ph.D. from hell are sent into religious institutions and are some of these religious devils. We brought into one of the nastiest ones we ever saw on the road was a religious devil. I mean, this this particular this particular woman would get up every Sunday and have a tongue and interpretation. She was the leader of the women's group in the church, and the first Sunday we are there and we're leading worship, the, her demon starts manifesting, and she comes up. And she's grabbing my wife by the arm and sinking her fingernails into her skin. Going, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And she's just laughing because we knew that devil's on his way out. So fortunately the pastor, the past, and it didn't even leave a mark on her. And you, I could literally see her fingernails buried in her skin, like a half inch into her skin. And she's in the spirit, so it's not harming her. She's just laughing. And the pastor must have been used to having demons around there. So oh, they, 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 came and, they came and got her and took her to the back. Well, anyway, the, re, the way I know something major happened to her is her husband, two days. In the 90s. Now, this was in the 90s. Two days later, he comes up and right, hands us a $500 check personally. I said, thank you for my new wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, That's whoa. Good. She must have been kind of like what we saw at home. <laughs> but you can see the difference when she got set free. Because God wants us all to be free. He doesn't want us locked under. And I mean, she was at church every week. She was doing the thing. She was being but that religious devil is worse than the... I see all kinds of sin devils at work every day. This, I see like third or fourth generation. Yeah, and she was third generation. And proud of it. I'm yeah. third generation Pentecostal demon. Ah. You know. But, freedom. but there's freedom. And God set her free. And her husband was very appreciative. <laughs> Amen. So God wants us free. And it didn't come by preaching the law. It came by allowing the Spirit of God to come in and move and actually walk out what the Scripture talks about. Because the Bible says it is for freedom Christ set us free. And the Spirit of Christ came in the room and started driving those things out. And they have no choice. If we will yield to God and let Him come in the room, especially when they think they're in control. That's the funny part, is to go in some of these places and these demons think, 
I got a maid. I'm hiding here in the church, and nobody even knows I'm here. And then the Spirit of God comes in, and they're like, <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. That's why I went singing more in tongues tonight, because when, when we were finishing, I thought I was done with God is here. And then I hit a little bit in tongues, and I literally saw in the Spirit, I saw demons kind of hiding behind rocks. And, and the more I sang, they were like, ah, flipping out. So I'm having a blast singing in the Spirit because I know it's just re it's wreaking, it's rocking their world. It's, we have no idea what happens. Right, yeah, I, I get it now. That was an accidental pun. <laughs> they were hiding behind rocks that were rocking their world. <laughs> we punish them. Yeah, we punish them. When we yield to the Spirit, all kinds of things are released into the atmosphere that will drive the devil crazy, and he hasn't got a clue. That's the thing I love about speaking in tongues. He hasn't. He doesn't know what we're saying. And the Bible tells us we're praying the perfect prayer, which means if we pray the perfect prayer, there's not, even if he understood there was nothing he could do about it, if you're praying the perfect prayer, when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you, it's like God, him, well, it is God himself. You know, God spoke and this whole planet came into creation. So when we yield our tongue to the Spirit of God, who knows what's being created and who knows what's being torn down? The kingdom's being built and the kingdom of darkness is being torn down. It's like sending tomahawk, some of these smart bombs to right pinpointed places and take them out in Jesus' name. What was the thing Jonathan said this week that was going on in Philadelphia? Oh, they were having a... Jonathan Shuttlesworth has now started a church in Pittsburgh. I think they've been going since the beginning of the year. Anyway, there was a massive increase of, of drugs in the city. The fentanyl was coming in and wreaking all kinds of havoc. And they were having a prayer meeting, and they felt the Spirit come on them to come against that. So they had concerted a prayer against the drugs. They showed the clip of their prayer. They even, yeah, they even showed the clip of the prayer in this meeting I saw when they were praying over it. Two, was it two days later? One. One day. The next next day, the biggest bust in the history fentanyl. of the city over fentanyl. <laughs> they caught the guy. It was like 700,000 hits of fentanyl that was wow. confiscated. So when power. you, when you pray the, the prayer, when you yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost, and you let him pray the perfect prayer through you. Because he said they had not intended to pray about that. And yeah, that wasn't even on their, the Spirit, the Lord on their radar in the natural. It wasn't on their radar to pray for it. But the Holy Spirit had it on his radar. And because they yielded and spoke, it freed the angels or whoever needs to be freed to go do it. People need to come and join us. Yeah, some of you need to come join us. All of you. All of you need to. Anybody watching? Even if this is 2032, come find us. <laughs> I kept trying to search that word for Copeland, and I kept punching 2033, 2032. My finger wouldn't oh. hit the two, so I was somewhere in the future. <laughs> or, oh, man, I, don't, I don't think I'm still half drunk from worship. Because... That reminds me of Kim Clement back in the day. He had this thing. You're somewhere in the future, and you look much better than you look right now. You're somewhere in the future, and you look much better than you look right now. You're somewhere in the future. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Verse 26. This is still the Passion Version. You have all become true children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Faith immersed you into Christ, and now you are covered and clothed with his life. 
and we no longer see each other in our former state, Jew or non-Jew, rich or poor, male or female, because we're all one through our union with Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are now Abraham's child and a true heir of all his blessings because of the promise God made to Abraham. There are things that belong to us that are because of the promise, not because of what we do. And the promise was given before the law, 430 years before the law ever came. The promise was already given. You can't come 430 years later and change what was already promised. You can't change the contract. You can you can put something alongside of it to help get the contract through, but you are not going to change the contract 430 years later, which is, you know, the, the law was a tutor. In fact, I think it's the next chapter. Let's see what it starts saying. Yep. Let me illustrate. This is chapter 4. Galatians, as long as an heir is a minor, he's not really much different than a servant. Although he is master over all of them, or until the time appointed by the father, the child is under the domestic supervision of the guardians of the estate. So it is with us. When we were juveniles, we were enslaved under the hostile spirits of the world. But when the time of fulfillment had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. All of this was so that he would redeem and set free those held hostage to the law so that we would receive our freedom Thank you. and full legal adoption as children as his children, and so that we would know that we are his true children. God released the spirit of sonship into our hearts, moving us to cry out intimately, my father, my true father. Now we're no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters, and because we're his we can access everything our Father has. You hear that? Amen. Not because of what we do, but because of whose we are. You know, there's a saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's the truth. It's, it's not what you do, it's what He did. And when your focus is on what you do, you're going to miss out on what He did. So it, make the adjustment and get your focus back on the cross Get your focus back on the fact that it's a promise and not something you earn. It's something you've been promised. Amen. And it's yours now. He paid for it. Why wouldn't you want something that's already been paid for? Or why would you want to repay for something that's already paid for? You have something? Yeah. Yeah. While you were saying that, I'm reminded of my is son. Yeah, yeah, barely, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when there are times when I promise something to one of my sons, they have no problem coming and reminding me. <laughs> They're not thinking about what they did or didn't do. They're not thinking about trying to, do they have enough money to do something? No. They're saying, Dad, you promised this. Dad, you promised this. Let's go. When are we going? Are we going now? We want to go now. Dad, you know, and it gives me, as a dad, I take joy when I see my son call me to account. Because he's, he's depending on me to be faithful to what I promised, but he's remembering what I promised, and that blesses my heart as a dad. And I'm looking, yes, son, we're going to go. We're going, and, and I've got this set time. We're going, and we're going to do it. And 
he loves to do stuff with us together. It's a it's a partnership. It's a it's a family thing, and it's not something we have to earn. It's something we get to enjoy, Amen. and that's really what he wants us to do. And and I don't want to think of, but one example. So, and he will change. He'll give you authority to see things changed, to see the promise fulfilled in your own life. And the example that he's reminded me of right now is I told my son, um, my youngest son, Jake, he loved, he still loves dinosaurs and all that kind of stuff. And there's a place near Lakeland that has a giant dinosaur and he decided, I want to go there. Well, a hurricane was coming. A storm was coming. And I said, well, son, you know, a storm's coming. And, and he's like, okay, Lord, get rid of that storm. <laughs> We're going. And I'm like, okay, God got rid of the storm. And we went. There's things that God will, God will still the storm. He'll get rid of the storm. Get your focus on him and what he wants to give you, what you get to enjoy together. And share it with others. Amen. 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 So here's the bottom line, at least of this part. If you want to operate under the law and you're going to depend on things that you do, you're going to be treated like a minor. So you're going to be subject to the law and it's going to keep you from the promise. If you want to get to the promise, you've got to put your faith in what God has done. Put your faith in what God has said. It's like Pastor Gary was saying, if, if, you, if you don't even know what he's promised, how can you believe what he's promised? You don't really know somebody until you find out exactly what they've said. And even if you've heard exactly what they said, sometimes you've got to ask them, well, what did you mean by that? <laughs> Explain it to me. You know, like like Lucille, the Lucy, I love Lucy, and I'm dating myself again. She would do something crazy, and Ricky would come home and say, Lucy, you have some explaining to do. Just ask God to explain these things to you. He, he knows how to talk your language. Amen. Amen. And he'll explain it to you. If your heart is right, it's when, you're, it's, when, it's when you just want the promise and you don't want the promiser. That's where you run into trouble. That's probably what makes most people operate in the flesh. They don't care about the relationship with the promiser. They just want what he's promised. That's going to lead into bondage. That's going to lead into failure. So don't do that. Get to know God. Get to know what he's promised. Ask him to do the work in your heart. Ask him to take you by the hand. You know, one of the things the Bible promises is the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. When I, when I read that, I see him taking me by the hand because I'm about to face a situation that I might not know the answer to, but he does. And he can lead me into the truth. And then once we're past the danger, he can come back and show me in the Word. Now, this is what just happened. And this is what you avoided because you let me lead you into all truth. Amen. He wants to lead you into blessing. He wants to lead you into prosperity. He wants you to lead you into a great relationships. He does. He wants you to be the head, not the tail. He wants you to buy the apartment building instead of having trouble finding one to rent. Amen. 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 So, I want to challenge you this week. Just take maybe a week and consume Galatians. It's only six chapters. It, it doesn't take long. I've been through it at least once. I've probably gone through it three times, once in three different versions, almost every day this week. You can get, get the U version Bible app on your phone. 
many of the versions even will read to you. So I put my headphones on and I have it playing on the on the screen so I could read it with my eyes and hear it with my ears. And it doesn't take it takes less than a half hour to go through the whole book. Just consume the word, consume the word. And then what happened at the end of the week, I, I didn't even know it was stirring up something else that brought the message this morning. So God will God will open your eyes to things you weren't expecting if you just get in the Word, get in the Word, get in the Word. So the theme of the weekend is build your life upon the Word and get in the Word so that you can walk in everything that He has for you. Amen. 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 God wants you to have a strong family. God doesn't want your marriages falling apart. He doesn't want your families falling apart. He doesn't want your body falling apart. He doesn't want your finances falling apart. Amen. He wants to make you, he wants to bless you so much that you can be a blessing to everybody you come in contact with. Amen. If you don't want to be blessed for you, then be blessed for the people around you. If you don't want it anyway, you shouldn't have a problem giving it away then. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor Becky brought up uh, either this morning or tonight about J.C. Penney, who, and there was another guy, I can't remember, it's the guy that invented the Caterpillar road equipment. He actually gave away 90% of his income. And there's still, he's dead and gone, and Caterpillar is still a major, a major corporation. And he got the, he saw it in a vision, in a dream or something, and he didn't know how to do this stuff, and he took it to engineers, and they, they put the stuff together, and that Caterpillar equipment, the idea came straight from heaven to a non-qualified person who didn't have a clue what God was showing him, but he was smart enough to take to know God was showing him something, and he took it to someone that could make sense of it and actually help him put it. So God, I believe God wants to show some people some stuff that you might not understand, but well, somebody's going to understand it, but you're the one that's going to benefit from it. Amen. Amen. And then God can use you if you're open. If you're not open, if you're thinking, oh, God doesn't do stuff like that. He'll never do something like that for me. Well, okay. Whatever you say. <laughs> if that's what you want to say about it, that's what you can have. But if God's going to bless anybody, he's going to bless me. Amen. 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 If God's going to give anybody a billion dollar idea, he's going to give me a billion dollar idea. Amen. If God's going to give anybody a billion soul idea, he's going to give me a billion soul idea. Amen. Who knows? God may give us an idea to radically change China. God may give us an idea to radically change India. You know, just those two countries, there's over a billion people in each of them. <laughs> well, Father, we thank you for your word and your presence. I pray that you would help us become full grown in you, not minors that have to be controlled by the, the law, but that we can be heirs that can walk in the freedom of what you've already purchased. So make us an heir in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you happen to be watching tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me from all my sin. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive your free gift of eternal life. Help me walk in the freedom 
that we've heard about tonight and that you offer me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're now on your way to heaven. If you need some materials that will help you, contact us at info at transformationchurch.com and we've got some PDF files we can send you to help get you started on your journey. If you live anywhere near Central Florida or you feel the Spirit of God telling you to move to Central Florida, then we invite you to come and be part of what God's doing here at Transformation Church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We will see you next week. Through us to change the world. Flow through us to change the world. Holy Spirit, flow through us. Touch and change us.